Well, a very warm welcome to you all this morning, and I do hope you're keeping safe and well and are in good spirits. Thank you for joining our church family today. And I pray that in the course of this online worship, that you'll be able to draw close to God. As usual, the responses we'll be using, as well as the Bible readings for the service and the words of the hymn and the song, can be found via the readings and prayers click box on the home page of the website. And right next to that will be the Sunday Sermon. So let's begin by lighting our candle as we welcome God's Spirit into our midst as we worship together. It's Trinity Sunday, so let's begin with our familiar greeting. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is like, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, trusting in a God who loves us and who forgives us. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We take a moment's silence. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace, by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Well, today is Trinity Sunday. It's the Sunday of the church year when we explicitly dwell on the Trinity, as the name suggests. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we try to make sense of it all. And it isn't easy. When I was at theological college, one of our set books was written by our principal. Partly why it was a set book, but it's called is this Christian theology, an introduction. It says introduction, but um, I think it's about well over five hundred pages. And there's a chapter about thirty pages or so on the doctrine of the Trinity. There it is. I'll just read you this sentence. The doctrine of the Trinity is unquestionably one of the most perplexing aspects of Christian theology and requires careful discussion. He's not wrong. It's a difficult concept and it's made more complicated by the fact that Scripture, the Bible, doesn't help hugely. The word Trinity doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible. And there's just a limited number of verses that mention Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Like today's Gospel does, Matthew chapter 28, as we shall see. And 1 Corinthians, um, sorry, 2 Corinthians 13, right at the end of that letter from Paul, we have the words of the grace which we, with which we'll be finishing today. And there are other occasions where the three are mentioned in the same paragraph and other occasions when the three are present implicitly, like at Jesus' baptism, with the voice from the Father in heaven, the Spirit alighting as a dove, Jesus being baptised, or in the account of creation. Well, today's sermon will try to make sense or some sense of it all, and I do hope it helps, even if only a little. But we shouldn't worry if we find it hard to explain. So do many great theologians, to be honest, all of them. And in any case, what we can do is bask in the rich spiritual nourishment of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. All three of whom, or is it one of whom, have so much to inspire and teach us. And all three of whom, or is it one, love us more than we can ever know. Our psalm today is Psalm 110, and it's the most quoted psalm in the New Testament. And as we read it together this morning, I encourage you to view it as a record of some kind of divine conversation. So the Spirit speaks through David, the author, to recount a conversation that was taking place in the heavenly realms as the Father speaks to the Son, Jesus, about the Son's ascension into heaven. And that, of course, means there's an additional dimension to this psalm in that it points forward prophetically from the time it was written in David's time, 8, 900 BC, maybe 1000 BC, to a time after Jesus' death and resurrection when he ascends to the right hand of the Father, as we celebrated at Ascension Day a few weeks ago. And there, Jesus will be king and high priest and judge. So let's give this psalm a go. The refrain is the Lord is king and priest and judge. The Lord is king and priest and judge. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord is king and priest and judge. 
The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you on this day of your birth, on the holy mountain. From the womb of the dawn, the dew of your new birth is upon you. The Lord is King and Priest and Judge. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is priest, is king and priest and judge. The king is at your right hand, O Lord. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. In all his majesty he shall judge among the nations. He will drink from a brook beside the way. Therefore shall he lift high his head. The Lord is King and Priest and Judge. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, we're going to have now first our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 40, which Tim Webber is bringing today. Then we're going to have our hymn. Ian Sharman is playing the hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing, and um, the words of the hymn will appear on the screen. Following that, Shirley Snow is going to bring our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 28. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, beginning to read at the 12th verse. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord, or instruct the Lord as his counsellor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him? And who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge, or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him, all nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
written in the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning to read at the 16th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Tim, and Ian, and Shirley. I wonder what helps you to imagine the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit when you reflect on the doctrine of the Trinity or when you pray. For me, one of the things that helps think of God the Father is by dwelling on the creation, contemplating its, its beauty, its design, its care and nurture, and through that, glimpsing something of the Creator God that lies behind it. One of the exercises we often do in confirmation classes is to put out a table full of various pictures, pictures of nature, and invite the candidates to select one or two of the pictures that strikes some sort of chord for them. It also acts as a kind of icebreaker because as they describe and explain why they've picked the ones they have, you start to get to know a little the person. And then the idea is that it helps us point to God the Father. So for example, it might be a beautiful landscape, hill in the background, some water in the foreground, some wildflowers, a tree, and a sense of stillness and peace. Or thinking to um, Ian Coffey, what he was talking about last week, about the picture of peace in the midst of a storm. It might be a single bird and contemplating the, the intricacy, the detail of one tiny bird. I don't know if some of you have been watching Spring Watch over the last few weeks. And I've been fascinated by what some of the um, expert zoologists have been saying about bird song. Absolutely fascinating. Or it might be a group of birds seeming to have fun in the water. Or a horse grazing on the hillside. So in glimpsing something of God the Father, maybe its pictures of creation can help us get there. God the Son, perhaps most obviously, contemplating the cross or an artist's representation of Jesus on the cross, or any number of the fantastic biblical scenes painted by artists that draw you in to what was happening. And then God the Spirit, maybe it's reflecting on the fruit of the Spirit, as the Holy Spirit dwelling within us helps us grow in love and joy and peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And some of them we grow in quicker than others. Or it might be a dove. Thinking about a dove, that image of the spirit as a dove, alighting on Jesus at his baptism. We're going to sing a simple chorus now that I'm sure you know well, Father, we adore you. It's actually used as the school prayer at the Brood Middle School. So the first verse is Father, second verse is Son, 
the third verse is spirit. And as we sing it, maybe some of the things I've just been saying will help you reflect on Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Father, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Jesus, we adore you. Lay our lives before how we love you. Spirit, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Well now, Shall we bow our heads and turn to prayer? The response for our prayers this morning, when I say the words, God, the Holy Trinity, may your will be done. If you could respond on earth as it is in heaven. So let us pray to the Father, through the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. as we marvel at the wonder of your creation, Lord God. May the church reflect your community and unity. May there be godly harmony, shared ministry, mutual support and care, and encouragement in the faith. God, the Holy Trinity, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, at this devastating time, the world over due to this virus, may all the world's leaders seek not personal power, but the public good. May conflicts and difficulties be faced honestly and needs recognised and met. May all our communities be built up on what is good, true, just and right. God, the Holy Trinity, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may there be love and respect for one another in every household and in every community. May barriers of race or background or colour be things long gone in our world. May there be mutual support and thoughtfulness, consideration and trust. God, the Holy Trinity, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the heart's cries for help be heard, the tears collected and the fears quietened. May suffering be eased and guilt erased, through your healing love. We think particularly of Jill and Geraint Price and Victoria Sadaby. And in a moment of quiet, we lift before God others known to us in need of his healing touch. God, the Holy Trinity, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, may the dead rise to new and eternal life, freed from their aching and restored forever to life with you. We pray for the family and friends, particularly of Eric Clark, much loved member of the congregation at Brood, who died last Sunday afternoon. And we pray too for the families and friends of Jeremy Butler, Leonard Davis and Anne Ryder. God of the Holy Trinity, may your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Lord God, we pour out to you our praise and wonder at the hidden mysterious holiness of your being, so full of glory and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And shall we conclude our prayers with the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today, especially if it's been your first time doing so. And hopefully there'll be another service at the same time next Sunday. A couple of other services already online on our website to check out if you haven't already. First of all, last Sunday was the Pentecost Praise Party put together by Cathy Short with some help from some of the children and from her husband Rob and um, it's it's really great fun so do take a look at that if you haven't already and also Brood Awakening our first online Brood Awakening which um, was last Wednesday and that's still there on the website and it includes a really good uh, sermon from or talk from Ian Coffey who's a fantastic speaker so do check that out if you haven't already. And we're going to finish today appropriately for Trinity Sunday with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you.